In this video, we're going to be making this uh, six foot Thomas bench. Uh, they have 15 degree angle legs. The uh, aprons cross underneath. And this is a design that we've been doing for a little over a year now and uh, have made quite a few of them over the past year for our customers. So uh, let's get started. All right, we're going to start by gluing up the top. And uh, obviously this is a lot smaller than uh, most of the tables that we build, so it's just two boards we're gluing together here. And now uh, while that's drying, I'm going to get started on the base. So this is uh, one of the legs. They're getting a 15 degree angle cut on, on each end. And then, uh, and then I'm going to taper them. And that taper starts about four inches from the top, and then it's uh, it's an inch and a half at the bottom. So I just do those measurements on the leg, and then uh, draw a line and line that up on the jig. Now, uh, now I've moved on to the aprons here. They're also getting a 15 degree cut. But on the legs, those angles face the same direction, and on the aprons, they uh, they face opposite directions. Now here I'm figuring my angle for my half lap that's going to cross oh, underneath. Oh, and uh, what I've done is drawn the size of my tabletop or my bench top on here and uh, I just pop a few chalk lines in that space uh, from corner to corner and then I use uh, use that angle jig right there to uh, to get that angle and then I'll mark it on my on my aprons And uh, here I'm just setting my uh, my t my blade to uh, to half the size of that uh, that apron, and these are the same exact size as those aprons. They're just some cutoffs, and uh, and I'm using those to dial that in to get the perfect half lap. And I'll always do that in several passes because I like to uh, I like to sneak up on that and get it just right. Now I'm going to get uh, get set up with my angle, and uh, how I'm going to do that I've got little lines drawn on each side of my apron here and I'm going to line those up with the slot on the top of my table saw and then uh, just match the gauge up to that and uh, as you saw it, it does not go over far enough this is a very sharp angle and it would not go over far enough so I had to put a little shim on it to get uh, to get that extra angle I needed and uh, I have since upgraded that piece and uh, and my new one will go all the way over 90 so uh, I, I've been using it on the last several projects and I've been extremely happy I don't know why I, I should have done that a long time ago I recently bought uh, the lower end anchor gauge and uh, and it's amazing it's one of those things that uh, once you once you buy it you, you you wonder why you didn't do it years ago I've been suffering with this stupid thing that came with my saw, and uh, and it's worked okay, but uh, but it's nothing in comparison to uh, to buy an aftermarket gauge. So uh, this little doodad will figure your half lap for you. I couldn't use it on the apron because it was too tall, but on a smaller piece like this, you can uh, put it against your board. And then uh, the other side of it shows the height the blade needs to be set at. And as you can see, it wasn't perfect. I still uh, did some test pieces and dialed it in and got it just right. And uh, I also use it to uh, to set the height on my uh, oh my square there. And you'll see why here in just a minute. I'll show you that. And what I'm doing now is is setting up for my 15 degree angle cut. So I uh, you know the end of the leg is cut is set at 15 degrees. Uh, and I put that against my fence and then I just bring up my miter gauge to that and uh, and tighten it down and and here's why I set that for that half lap size because I uh, I use that square to uh, to score the back side of the cut so uh, as that blade comes through on that last cut it, I don't have any tear out and that makes a huge difference you just take an extra minute and uh, and score right there where your where your last you know last pass is going to be, and you won't have any tear out. And 
as you can see I'm using the, the last leg uh, to transfer that mark over for the next one and then I'll score that and now I'm moving on to the aprons so they're doing the same thing but uh, it's a little different size I've got a got a mark there off my off my leg and uh, getting that set up and we'll get these half laps done on the aprons and we'll, and we'll be ready to put this base together got to try to ignore that big pile of wood in the background there that uh, that's all scraps that uh, that we're burning in our wood burning stove and uh, that's all gone now but it looks like a mess back there I know I always like to measure there just to make sure that uh, that everything's right and uh, and it was good. I always like to use a little uh, sawdust to uh, to clean up my glue squeeze out. And uh, that does two things, you know, it, it uh, obviously cleans up the glue, but then it also will fill any, any little inconsistencies you have in there. It'll, it'll fill it in with, uh, with sawdust and glue and hide it. Now these are the pieces and I, and I'm sorry, I didn't, uh, didn't, uh, there's a couple things I didn't film and these are one of them. These little pieces are going to go between those legs just to give that base a little more stability. And I'm just going to put those in with some pocket screws. And uh, if you notice there, you know, that, that space is too tight to just come straight in with a pocket screw. So I put them in at an angle. And uh, that, that single pocket hole jig from Craig works great for that. You can see there I'm coming in an angle from the bottom to get that back side. And this next angle you'll be able to see that a little better. And this something else that uh, that I failed the video and I, I could have swore I, I taped it but uh, I went through uh, went through all my video and couldn't find it anywhere but uh, I also pegged those half laps from the uh, the leg to the apron with uh, with some dowels. Now I've got the tabletop out of clamps and uh, I'm just cutting it to, uh, to final length. I had it about an inch and a half long just to give me a little room to play. Getting the, the dried up glue squeeze out cleaned off there and then we'll uh, get the rest of it off with the, with the belt sander and, uh, and also flatten any inconsistencies between the two boards. Now, you know, before I was going across the grain and that puts all kinds of scratches in it so then I have to come back uh, and and run with the grain to uh, to get rid of those scratches now that's a that's a chamfer bit and we're gonna put I'm gonna put that on the bottom side of this top I'm gonna put a large chamfer across there and on the top we'll just do a small round over it's just this is just a nice little added detail and that's the small round over that's going on the top. Now I'm going to start doing some final sanding here. I start off with the 80 grit and then uh, water pop and go up to 120, 180. This little pull saw is great for uh, cutting these dowels off I use it all the time and and all these tools I use in the video I will have links of those in the in the description if uh, if you're interested in any of those you know feel free to click on one of those links and uh, it's not going to cost you any money but it does uh, we I am set up as an affiliate with Amazon so we'll we'll get paid a little bit now 
Now right now I'm not really doing any final sanding. I am just cleaning up the rough spots so I can uh, so I can use the router with a large round over and get this thing rounded over. I'm just getting everything out of the way so there's no bumps while I'm when I'm running that router around. And to me, the the, uh, the appearance really really changes with this large round over. It really uh, softens it up and and just gives it a nice look. And there's a lot of pieces of furniture I don't use that large round over on, but uh, but on this style of furniture, I I really like it. Now I'm uh, just applying some Minwax stain. This is uh, weathered oak stain. And it's not quite as gray as it looks right now once we wipe it down. Once I get it wiped down, you'll see uh, see what it looks like. It it really makes the, oak, the red oak have a nice look to it. I've got a, a round uh, six foot table display in the store that's finished with this weathered oak and I've had a lot of compliments on it from customers and several customers order tables with that finish just from that table. And uh, after the after the stain I'll come in with some Vermont Natural Coatings furniture finish. I didn't uh, didn't film that but uh, I put three coats on and in, in between each coat you know I sanded the 320. Um, the second coat can be put on after two hours and then the third coat, you want to wait eight hours before you put your final coat on. Now I'm just attaching the top to the base with some uh, with some tabletop clips. Link for those will be in my description also if you're interested in those. That little slot I just put in with a uh, uh, biscuit joiner. And there it is all done. It's a, it's a pretty simple build, but I think it looks really cool. If, uh, if you have any questions about it or comments, please uh, like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.